Praise the Lord. Welcome to Cloudy God's Nugget for the day. Praise the Lord. I trust the Lord that you're doing well. Hallelujah. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Praise His holy name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Today we are going to be talking about the lessons from the seven churches of the book of Revelations. This is a series we've started and we have talked about. Um, uh, this is going to be our, the last church we're going to talk about. The church, the letter to the church at Laodicea. This is the Laodicean church. Praise his holy name. But before we get into the word, we're going to take a minute or two to just honor the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. And I will give you all my worship. And I will give you all my praise. Because you alone I long to worship. And you alone, you are worthy of my praise. And I will give you all my worship. And I will give you all my praise. Because you alone I long to worship. And you alone, you are worthy of my praise. Jesus, you're so worthy of all of our praise. We love you so much. We honor you, we reverence you. We're excited to be in your presence. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. We're here to worship you, honor you, praise you, glorify you, thank you, adore you, magnify you. We magnify your holy name, who's like you, who can be compared to you. Thank you for all of your goodness in our lives, for looking out for us, Lord, all the time for your faithfulness, for your provision, for your blessings, your grace, your compassion, your mercy, your protection. We love you, Jesus, for your favors, for answered prayers. We love you so much, so much. All the things you're going before us, you're going ahead of us, and you're making those crooked paths straight. Thank you for all the things you shield us from, oh God. Thank you, Lord, that you caused your word to come to pass in our lives. We love you, Jesus. Reverence your holy name. Thank you, Lord. You are so faithful. There is no God like you. Blessed be your holy name. Precious Jesus, I pray that even as we get into your word today, I just pray for your anointing. I pray for your grace. I pray that you speak through me. I pray you bless the here, O oh God. Have your way today, O oh God. We don't want to leave your presence the same. I pray that our lives will be transformed. Mold us into your very, very image. And help us, Lord, not to be just hearers of your word, but do us, O oh God. Glorify your name in our lives. In your precious holy name we pray. Amen. Bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So uh, today we're taking our text from Revelations. Uh, we're reading chapter 3. We're going to start from verse 14. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It says, Write to the angel of the church in Laodicea. Thus says the Amen. Hallelujah. The faithful and the true witness. That's our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. He appeared to John on the island of Patmos and he revealed to him the things to come in the future, the things pertaining to the end times. And he had this word for uh, to him for the churches that existed at that time. We are the church of God. This word is for us as well. The Lord is speaking to us. What we're doing is we're trying to, we want to learn lessons from these churches, right? Um, we want to learn lessons from these churches. We want whatever the Lord it was, the Lord was speaking to them it was because he observed certain things and he wanted them to get things right before his coming. And it, it hasn't changed. It's the same thing. It's the same thing. Many, if you read through this um, seven churches, you see that you see the same um, attitude, the same. You see some you, you observe that the same things are going on even in our today's world. Right. There are some things that he uh, he commended them for some churches. He commanded them for certain things. And there are some things he rebuked them for and told them they needed to repent. So um, we're looking at this for the church as a whole, but we, we know that we make up that church. So I want, as we're going through this lesson, I want us to be reflective of our own personal lives and say, you know what? Am I guilty of this? Am I going contrary to this? Right? Is this me? Is this the, is this the, is the word of the Lord for me? And if it's for you, run with it. That's when now we have the time to make those changes, make those adjustments, right? That's why the Lord gave them those warnings because he continued to say, if you don't make changes, I'm going to take away your lampstand from you. I'm going to take your position. I'm going to 
you know, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna turn you away. The Lord was warning, and He's still warning us ahead of time. Now that we have the time to get it right with God, praise the name of the Lord. So we're gonna continue to read verse 15. It says, "I know your works that you are neither hot, uh, cold nor hot." Hmm. I wish that you were cold or hot. So because you are lukewarm and neither hot nor cold, I am going to vomit you out of my mouth. That's what I was saying. The Lord is going to say to certain kinds of person, get away from my sight. I know we love to think of God as gracious and kind and merciful and loving. And he is all of that. But there's going to be a day of judgment. That's why we've had this leeway all this time. And, and we're just doing our own thing. There's going to be a day of judgment. Right? Jesus came when he came. He came just to take our sins and be gracious and show us the way and bring us deliverance and all of that. And we've had this time to get it right. There's day, going to come a day where he's going to judge the world of sin. He's going to come in a just a different form. Um, praise the name of the Lord. So he's going to come as king of glory. King of glory is going to come as a God of justice. Hallelujah. So we need to take this. We need to wake up and we need to take the word of the Lord seriously. So, so it says uh, to this church here, yeah, you're neither hot nor cold. I think that's a very, very terrible place um, to be. You know, you might say, but being cold, cold meaning um, you don't even know the Lord. You have no, you don't care about God. I think being lukewarm is really terrible because it's like you're almost there, but you're not there. It reminds me of Lot's wife and I, I have a teaching on that. Um... She was leaving Sodom and Gomorrah. She was on her way out. The angels had told them, take off, leave, you know, Lot and the wife and the, and the two daughters and leave. And she was on her way out of the judgment and she turned around. Why? Because some part of our heart was still with um, Sodom and Gomorrah. Some part of our heart was in worldliness. So it's kind of, it's, it's painful if you think about it. She was on her way out. She could have averted that judgment and that penalty, but she didn't, she didn't let go. She didn't, she wasn't in full surrender. And so that's the same person, the look one person here, yeah, the Lord is addressing, you know, it says, I'll spit you out. In fact, the Lord says, I'd rather you be one, your heart or cold. You know, it's a terrible place to be. And why am I dwelling on this? I'm dwelling on this because unfortunately a lot of people are caught up here. That's just one of the deceptions of the enemy. Right? He fools you into thinking you're there, but you're not there. And I, I can bet you he spoke to Eve, um, Lot's wife at that time and says, Hey, you remember, you remember your car? Or you remember your fancy ha house? Or you remember your fancy clothes? Something. He must have said something to her to distract her that made her turn around. And she turned into a pillar of salt. We don't want to be that one. Right? So people, we find a lot of professing Christians lukewarm. They're not, they're not on fire for God. They're not passionate. They say they have, they have a form of godliness. They know God. They say they re receive Jesus into their lives, but they live for themselves. They're so caught up in the world, just like Lot's wife. They're staring their their hearts, part of their hearts are, are, is looking in the world. They like the world system. They like what they think the world has to offer. Whereas this is all a deception of the enemy. Right? He takes the glories of God and he perverts it and he packages it and he gives it to us. And people are swayed because of their, their, their feelings and their, in their, um, um, they like to operate in their senses. Right, People are swayed and moved and, and tricked and deceived into those things that the enemy presents to them. Whereas the original, the original stuff is with God. The real stuff is with God. It's just that to, the way to attain it uh, with God is different from the, the way of the flesh. When you want something from God, there's a way to go about it. There's a price you pay. I know we say it's free, but you do, you do, I, just from my experience, there's a way to go about it with God. The price you pay is like you have to let, let down your flesh. You have to let go of your flesh. The Bible says no flesh will glory in his presence. You can't be in sin and, and then you want to be all of everything of the kingdom of God. It, Light and darkness do not dwell together. So people kind of want to be in the flesh and then they want to be with God at the same time. They want to get the glories. The Bible says, I said, I'm going to spit you out of my mouth. 
When we come to God, we have to come in full surrender. What does it mean? It means you're giving your life totally to God. You're going to say, you know what? This sensuality, these ways of the flesh, these things I'm so accustomed to, I'm going to lay them down. I'm going to trust you. I want to, I want to, I, I want to do it your own way. I, I, I lay my life in full surrender. I want to come after you first. Seek God's kingdom first. And the things, the Lord doesn't say seek God's kingdom first and you'll get nothing. He says seek God's kingdom first and the things you want to be added on to you. So we can get those things that we go after in this world, but we get them in the Lord, not at, not at, at, aside the Lord, outside the Lord. We get them in the Lord. You want joy. I'm, I'm telling you, ultimately, we want the things that are of the kingdom. But the enemy fools us and goes through our flesh. Because at the end of the day, I believe every human being wants joy. They want peace. They want soundness of mind. They want value, right? They want to prosper. These are things that we want. These things are all of the kingdom of God. This is, that's the essence of God. If God wasn't prosperous, then where do we, where, how was this world created? Every good thing, not even the things, the secular things we admire that our, the enemy has perverted, they all came from God. The devil is not creating anything. He just steals those things, perverts them, and uses them for his own purposes to drag people to hell at the end of the day. That's his game plan. Destroy people and drag them to hell. But he packages it in a way that it, it, it um, is appealing to the flesh. But there's a way to get to those things through God. Your, the Bible, Jesus wants us, he, he has given us himself as a free sacrifice, but you must lay down something. The Bible says, carry your cross and follow me. You, Jesus, they say you want to be a disciple of God, of Jesus Christ. You have to carry your cross. You have to lay down your flesh. That's the thing you have to sacrifice. Jesus already gave himself for us. He gave his life for us. We have to lay down our flesh. Your flesh will not glory in God's presence. Because the flesh is prone to sin. So what am I saying? You need to want to let go. And that let go is not really even, it's not necessarily the works. The works will come. But it's, the first step there is truly in your heart. Because I found out that many times when people struggle, it's because they've not let go in their heart. It's not just because the, 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 the temptation is so overwhelming. It's because in their heart, they're somewhere in their hearts, they're still holding on to that thing. Because I found out anything that you really despise and you really hate and you want to get rid of it, right? And you get with God's program, you will, it, the power will come upon you. The Lord will deliver you from something you really want to be delivered from. Many times when people are not delivered from something, they don't really in their hearts. You might not see it as a person externally. It might look like they really want it. They may even act like they really want to let go. But in the depth of their heart, they're not letting go. Some part of them is still holding on to that thing for whatever reason. And that's, and that's, the, that's the part we play. You have to be willing to sacrifice. When you're willing to sacrifice your flesh, your fleshly desires, your fleshly pleasures, the Holy Spirit will help you. He will strengthen you. He will lift you up. He will empower you. And you walk uh, victorious. Hallelujah. So I'm continue to read about this church. He says, um, for you say I'm rich. I have become wealthy. I need nothing. And you don't really realize that you're wretched, pitiful, poor, blind, and naked. That's what I'm saying. The only reason why they are lukewarm is because they want the things of the world. And many of them may have attained it. The Lord is gracious, right? But they are so caught up in it that they don't think they need God. So they have a form of godliness, but there's no substance to it. They are more into the things of the world, the things they've acquired, achieved. It could be a status. It could be aff um, affluent, wealth, affluence, wealth. It could be the value people give you. It could be pleasures. It could be anything. So it says those people are deceived. It says they are wretched, pitiful, poor, blind, naked. But if you look at them in the natural, it may not seem that way. Many times people even uh, honor this kind of people. They might be, this kind of persons might be your pastors. They might be world leaders. They might be celebrities. They might be whatever, you know. So um, that the, the world idolizes those people. The world praises you. And that's how it looks externally. That's why they think they're wealthy and they need nothing, right? You're, you're, you're multi-millionaire, you're billionaire, you're wealthy, you have a great job, you know, at whatever level, right? You look externally and you feel that you have something. But guess what? On the day of reckoning, on the, either the day the person dies or the day Jesus comes back, none of those things will mean anything. All the things you've amassed, acquired, all the pleasures, they won't mean anything. What would, what, what would give account would be your soul. Did you honor God? Did you fear God? Did you live according to the spirit and not in the flesh? Were you compromising as a Christian? Did you come out of Babylon and live holy and sanctified unto God? 
So that's why it says here, you're poor, blind, and naked. They're blind because they don't even know. They're naked because they're just cold clothed in worldliness. Their spirit is empty. They're just as they're empty. They're empty. There's nothing in their spirit. They're compromised. Verse 18 here, it says, I advise you to buy from me gold refined in, in the fire so that you may be rich. The real, the, the, the actual word there, apart besides the gold, is refined. That's what I mean by laying down your flesh. You have to be refined. Refined. Remove the impurities. Remove the impurities. For you to be refined, you have to allow the Holy Spirit to do His work. But you have to be surrendered. You have to be available. You have to make yourself available. What does that mean? It means you have to be I'm surrendered in God's presence. You have to surrender to God. Not just at one time, but every day. The apostle said, I die daily. You, you have to die to your flesh every day. Be willing to take up that cross. Be willing to take up the or take on the life of Jesus Christ. Be willing to let go of your carnal ways, your old ways. All things have passed away. All things have become new. Let your spirit be the one that dominates your life, not your senses, not your flesh, not your desires. Every desire the Lord has given us has its place. It's not for it to rule us. It's for us to rule it. You, you're not going. You're not going to let your desires, your um. Or pleasures dominate you. You're gonna dominate it. For example, if you're if if you have um the hum, human physical desires, right? Pleasures. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> right. There's a place for it. <coughs> There's a place for it. Right. That place is called marriage. You're not gonna go outside and begin to do things contrary to the will of God. You have to be subject to the will of God. Hallelujah. I say, um, <clears throat> I advise you to buy from me gold refined in the fire so that you may be rich, white clothes so that you may be dressed in your shameful nakedness, nakedness not exposed. White clothes signify purity, purity, sanctification, holiness, holiness. The Lord is coming for a pure, spotless bride, blameless. That's the white clothes, a pure garments, not compromised, not filthy. Not of Jezebel, but a pure bride, holy, godly, pure. <clears throat> Excuse me. And he says you may be dressed, okay, uh, so that you may be dressed and your shameful nakedness not be exposed. An ointment to spread on your eyes so that you may see. That's a place of enlightenment according to the word of God, according to the truth of the word of God. And all people are walking around blind and naked. Blind, blind. Blind to the, the, the things of the spirit. They're just so caught up in the flesh. They're so caught up in this world system. They are blind to the heartbeat of God. They are blind to the things that matter to God. They are blind to the truth of the word of God. This is the time to turn around to repent. The, the word of God say here says, I'm going to vomit you. I'm going to spit you out. It meaning that you should have been in, but you'll be spat out. Because it's just the same thing as Lot's wife again. You should have been on your way out of, to deliverance. But then you're sucked up because your, your heart is with the world. Your heart is not with God. You can't be half-baked with God. <clears throat> Verse 19 says, As many as I love, I rebuke and discipline. So be zealous and repent. God is looking for people that are passionate about Him. Passionate. On fire for Him. Love Him wholeheartedly. Fully surrendered. And it's not burdensome. It's a lie from the enemy. It's not burdensome. I, the enemy makes it look like when you follow God, you're going to lose out on so much. I thought that a couple, many years ago. I thought, oh, being a Christian is boring. It's too restrictive. You know, I'm not going to enjoy Like That's a lie. Because everything that we want to enjoy when we become, and uh, when we enjoy, we want to enjoy in the world, all those things are originally God's. The enemy just takes them and mixes them with sin and repackages, it, packages those things in a way that is appealing to the flesh. Think about it. And all the things that mean something to us. If we want romance, you get that in marriage, right? You trust the Lord. That's why I said that God has his own ways. God has his own ways. He has his own order. It's different from the ways of the world. The world says, okay, if you want romance, just go get it. God says, no, it's in the confinement of marriage. It's honorable in marriage, right? You trust God. You're going to trust God. You're going to live holy and sanctified and trust God. And I'm telling you, God will come through for you. Think about anything, music, you have godly music. 
you have music you can enjoy that music godly music pure music same thing you you if if, if your if your thing is movies right right or you 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 want what about you for movies for example you can actually listen there are people that have testimonies if you want if you have a creative mind or a mind that is imaginative you can listen to people's testimonies and you hear how you know um how they were uh, blasted by the enemy and all the things the enemy and then you see what god did i mean then you're still if that's a story that's worth it a story that at the end is a blessing it glorifies god you understand? So everything that the enemy takes and perverts, the things that people lost after, think about it. All the things that people lost, lost after, the, 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 those thrills came originally from God. God. God has his ways. They are undefiled. They are pure. And the truth is many times when people desire things of the flesh, it's just because they are in the flesh. It's not because the things are so thrilling or they can't do without it. When you start walking by the spirit, you'll find out that those things don't even mean anything. The, the, the lust of the flesh, all those things that meant so much for you, to you that you didn't think you could let go of. When you start walking by the spirit, I'm telling you, you won't even have a desire. It won't even be a struggle. You'll be like, how in the world did I even like these kind of things? Your, your perception will be different because your spirit is different. Because your spirit man is, is strong now. Because you're refined. You don't have those impurities that you've been holding on to. You don't have those anymore. I'm telling you, the ways of God, they are not burdensome. The enemy has perverted it and made, he, he calls good evil and evil good. And a lot of people fall for those things. You're not going to feel, I'm telling you, when you start walking closely with the Lord, you're not going to feel um, that you're missing out on anything. When you start the journey, it's going to feel that way. Because you're, you're already accustomed to a certain lifestyle. Your flesh likes those gratifications. But when you put your flesh in its place, you'll find that those things are not a big deal. You wouldn't even crave them. In fact, you will understand why you shouldn't even desire those things. You will see through everything. You will, you will see it for what it is. You will see the destructive part that that thing would have led you. You will see how the enemy has their demons wrapped around whatever it is that you, you found pleasurable. You, you will see through it. You see differently. So it wouldn't even appeal to you. It wouldn't appeal to you. Your taste becomes different. You just want things that are heavenly. You want things according to God's will. And those heavenly things are here on earth. You can find, we can, we, we, those things, the Lord will just guide you. I, I'm just trying my best to explain it. That it's not the way you think. Because many times people think if they follow God, they are losing out on so much. It's because you're still in the flesh. When you become a person of the spirit, I'm telling you, those things won't mean anything. You will have a different taste, a different passion. You will look forward to different things. And this will you'll be lined up with God because now your thinking is lined up with God, not the ways of the enemy, not the ways of the flesh, not the ways of the world. Why wouldn't you want to come higher? Why wouldn't you want to come higher? Why wouldn't you want to think like God, feel like God, respond to things like God, resist things like God will expect you to, right? When we get tempted and, and tempted and we stay in the flesh, it's because we're just in the flesh. That's what it is. We're sensual. We're not mature in our spirit. There's no maturity. So we need to come up higher. When you start walking with the Lord day by day by, by day, you're going to get strong in your spirit. You're going to master those things. It won't be a big deal. And I remember I said when you're transitioning, yes, it's going to be a struggle for you because you're already accustomed to the ways of the flesh, nourishing your flesh. Your flesh is going to scream through it, feed through a tantrum. It's going to be annoyed. It's going to be miserable. Yes, you're, that's where you're killing that flesh. You're dealing with it. You're putting it in its place. Then if you are consistent, one day you find that you would have mastered it. You'll be the boss of your flesh. Your flesh will not dictate to you how you should respond, how you should react. It won't tempt you here, tempt you there. You'll be strong. You talk to your, your flesh, makes those suggestions. You put it in its place. You tell it what you, you want you guys to do. And we can, and this, you, we can look at this in just the different things that affect our lives, in different ways, in different things. You're not controlled by your flesh. You're not controlled by the dictates of your senses. And that's a beautiful place to be. You call the shot. You examine situation by situation and say, no, I don't want to be a partaker of this. No, I'm not going to fall for this. No, I can see through this. I can see the enemy's game plan here. I can see the enemy's scheme, right? You, you, you'll be strong. And then not only is it beneficial to you, right? It keeps you in a safe place. Not only that, that the Lord is pleased with you. That's how you attract there are absolute blessings of the Lord. We don't want, you know, the Lord is gracious. That's the truth. Even when we're in sin, he still is gracious. We pray, we want a job, he gives us. We say we want a spouse, he gives us the Lord. But there is something about being well aligned with the Lord. 
No, but it's so beautiful. I can't even explain it. It's beyond the material things we want. It's that place of rest and confidence in God, of oneness in God. It's deep. It's deep, but it's, it's, it's available. It's deep, but it's available. Seek me and seek me with all of your heart. Seek me with diligence, the word of God says. So why am I saying this? The Lord doesn't want us to be lukewarm. There's no need for that. Lukewarm in God's perspective. The, the people that we honor and adore uh, and admire and idolize, all those things. The Lord calls them wretched, pitiful, poor, blind, and naked. That's God's perspective. So why should we glory the things that the Lord calls wretched, pitiful, poor, poor blind, naked? Those are the things we are. Those are the people where we, sometimes we are, we admire, we admire, we idolize. One of some people even say they want to be like them. You envy those kind. No, I don't. I don't. I want. I want to be lined up with the will of God. I want to be like Jesus. I don't want to be like the the ways of this world. It's profitable to nothing. It looks like something, but there's nothing there. There's nothing. At the end of the day, it's empty. It's void. And it's a pathway that leads to destruction. Hallelujah. So the Lord says, let us be zealous and repent. He tells us what he wants us to do. Repent. It means turn around, turn back to me. Catch yourself, get yourself, wake up. Verse 20 says, see, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and eat with him and he with me. That's where we're at now. That's why we're having this talk. He says, I stand, stand at the door and I knock. The Lord has given us the word. He says, I'm knocking. Turn around now. Open the door to me. Open your heart. Don't have a heart uh, that is hardened towards God. Have a heart that is tender to the voice of God. We don't know. You know, the Lord can show up at any time. And that time, it, it's going to be late if you don't make up your mind today. I want to follow God wholeheartedly. I'm tired of the passions of this world. I'm going to seek God. I'm going to trust God. I will meet my needs. I'm, I'm telling you, no matter what the human need is, in God, you'll get it. You will get it. You will get it. The world says, get it through sin, compromise, you know, prioritizing things of the world. No, honor God. When you honor God, he will grant you your heart's desires. He put it there. He will grant you your heart's desires. Every, every desire we have, right? The Lord has allowed it to be inside of us for a reason, not for it to dominate us, not for it to master us, but we master it. And he wants us to cultivate it in his own way. So Jesus is knocking at your heart, knocking on the door of your heart right now. Open your hearts. Don't be hardened. Don't say next time. Don't say later. Don't say, let me do this one sin. Sin is destructive. It may seem appealing and exciting and trendy, but it's destructive. It doesn't matter what everybody else is doing, what everyone else is saying, what the media is saying, what your friends are doing, what's trending on social media. It doesn't matter. Seek the way, seek after God. God is looking for those whose hearts are true towards him. Steadfast. The word says his eyes search for, to and for looking for people that understand. Understand his ways. Are you, are you seeking for God? Are you seeking after God? Do you understand his ways? Are you diligent? Are you, are you hungry to know his ways? His ways are not our ways. His ways are not our human ways. There's a way that seems right to a man, but the end is destruction. It's there's a way that in our minds it will look okay. The enemy will lie to us that it's okay. That's not the way of God. Let us seek the way of God. You seek the way of God by seeking his face. Seeking his face. Studying the word of God. That's how you're going to know the truth. And that truth will set you free. Give you the ultimate freedom in your soul. The Bible says we should be sanctified unto, by truth. That's the truth also that will separate you for the coming of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. When he comes in the clouds, then he can he will identify you. She set apart for me. He set apart for me. Hallelujah. Verse 21. To the one who conquers, I will give the right to sit with me on my throne, just as I, I also conquered and sat down with my father on his throne. That's pretty explicit. Right? If he says, if you overcome, I just said, if you overcome, then you're rapturable. The Lord is going to take you when he comes. The rest of the world is going to be judged. It's going to be destroyed with fire. The wrath of God is going to be poured out on this world because of so much sin, so much evil, so much wickedness. You don't want to be like Lot's wife, hanging in a midway, lukewarm. You want to be hot. You want to be on fire for God. You want to be on fire for God. Verse 22, let anyone who has ears to hear listen to what the Spirit of the uh, says to the churches. That's the Lord's final call, and that's the final word to the churches. If you have ears to listen, spiritual ears, 
Open your heart. Open your ears. Listen to the word of the Lord. Choose life. Choose life. Being lukewarm is, 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 is senseless. I'm telling you. You are not missing anything by being on fire for God. Going after God. Forsaking the ways of the world. I'm telling you everything. Just trust me. Most important to trust the Lord. Everything that you're looking for in this world. There's a way to get those things in God. There is. You have to go according to God's order. And God loves you. The devil can't love you. He has no. He doesn't have that ability. People can only love you so much. Even when people love you, it's by the grace of God. So there's no need being, um, being not being wholehearted with God, and thinking that you're gonna lose out on something when you come to God. I thought that, and I was deceived, and it wasn't a, it wasn't a fun path. I know now the truth of the word of God, and I continue to learn the truth of the word of God. Stay in God. I'm telling you, He'll grant you the desires of your heart. Every single need, every need that is, is pure, the Lord will grant you. The Lord will honor you. Every single need that is pure and according to His will. It is well with us. God loves you. You're precious to Him. Let's pray. Father God, I thank you for this word. Thank you that you love, you love us so much. Yes, I know you love us so much, Lord. That's why you brought this word. Oh, Father God, we just come to your presence, oh God. In full surrender anywhere we come against your will and your purposes in our thoughts words or actions lord we ask for your mercy i pray oh god you know the condition of my brother and sister's heart lord if they are that place where they are lukewarm neither hot nor cold oh lord i ask for your mercy oh god i pray oh lord that your word will permeate your heart right now oh god but i give them our transformation oh god oh god perfect them oh god perfect them oh god draw them to you oh god Father, bring them to that place, O oh God, in you, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Cause them to be embedded in you, O oh God. Your, your word says you stand at the door and knock if, we, if we're here to open the door. Lord, right now we're opening our hearts to you, O oh God. My brother and sister, I encourage you. Just say to the Lord, I open my heart to you. Come into my heart, Jesus. Fill me, O oh God. Fill me with your love. Fill me with your precious Holy Spirit. I surrender completely to you to your lordship i seek you with all of my heart i forsake the ways of this world i forsake the ways of the, this world i forsake the pleasures of this world i belong to you jesus i denounce the kingdom of darkness i surrender completely to you jesus you are my lord and my personal savior i will serve no god but you i surrender to you i want to be on fire for you jesus fill my heart with your spirit oh god fill my heart with all of you i love you jesus i belong to you Thank you, Lord, that you keep me strong even to your coming. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. It is well with you. God bless you. The Lord indeed will bless you. He will keep you. He will keep you. He will strengthen you. Keep your heart with the Lord. Keep going after God every day. Spend time in his word. In prayer and in worship. Pay attention to Christian material. Stay away from things that are ungodly and unrighteous. That will pollute your spirit. And the Lord will perfect you in Jesus' name. Well, I love you. I want to thank you for joining in with me on Claudia God's Nugget for the day. God bless you. I love you. I'll keep praying for you. It is well with you. Bye-bye.